I spend a lot of time talking to young people, high school students, university students, and I ask them over and over again, do you go to church? Over and over again, I get the same answer. No, I don't. And when I ask why, they all give me the same answer. It's not that they've given up believing in God. They say, I don't go to church because church is boring. Well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but I have this to say. Jesus is important. And if you could get a good look of Jesus, a good look at Jesus as he comes through the New Testament, you'll find him exciting. And that's what this program is about. I'm Tony Campolo. On my right is none other than Shane Claiborne. Uh, we are here to tell you about Red Letter Christianity. Uh, Red Letter Christianity is about people who take the words of Jesus seriously. The Bible has the words of Jesus highlighted in red. We read those words and we say, what if Jesus wasn't kidding? What if he was, what if he was serious? Yeah. What if he really was calling us to give up our money and give it to the poor? And the guests that we have on the show are all folks that in a lot of different ways are doing that. And what I love about Red Letter Christianity, it doesn't mean that we're all exactly, end up looking exactly the same or doing exactly the same thing. Uh, one, one of my, my uh, lines that I've held on to is nonconformity doesn't mean uniformity. Yeah. Not conforming to the patterns of this world doesn't mean we're all going to end up looking and doing the same thing. And I think one of the biggest questions that uh, we, we, we raise on this show is not just what are you going to do when you grow up, but who are you becoming? Yeah. And how can you do your gifts and your skills and, and see it as a part of what God's doing in the world. I think we grew up, both of us did, uh, m much later than myself, you grew up. If much you have later. grown up, I mean, you're still working on it, aren't you? <laughs> I'm working on it. Uh, let me just say that uh, we, we had this cookie cutter Christian. We, we, we gave our lives to Jesus and then we said, what does a Christian look like? And there was one stereotype image of what a Christian looked like what he did or what she did, how one acted, and that was what it was all about. Mm. And what we have on this show are people who are not cookie cutter Christians. They, they are unique, they are special, and the guest we have today Nicole, is- Nicole Lim, is, 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 she's got a great story because part of what she did was exactly that. She fell in love with Jesus and she became deeply disturbed about a lot of the patterns in our world and the things happening. And, saw our faith not as a ticket out of this world, but as a reason to engage the pain and the brokenness of the world we live in. And her special interest lies in her concern for women, women who have been kicked around, abused, sexually used, particularly in Africa. And she has a background in the film industry and in photography. And so she brings those skills. This is a good example of somebody says, here are my skills, photography, uh, film, and I, I'm gonna take that and use it with the direction of God uh, to, to reach people who need to be reached. And, uh, and she started this program, uh, what is it, Freely? We're gonna find out all about it. We better find out here, soon. Here's, you know, as, as you were sharing, one of the things that I, I remember is a line by Frederick Buechner that says, we've gotta take our deepest passions and connect them to the world's deepest pain. And that's exactly what Nicole Lim has done. That'll she, preach She's take, taken her passions and connected them Let, to the world's Let's pain. look at this video and check out what she's doing. In Islam, life is very difficult. And girls are mostly exposed to prostitution so that they can take care of their family. Because in Islam you find very many orphans, very many single parents, and there are no jobs.
Nicole, thanks for being here with us on Red Letter Christianity. Yeah. And I, you know, I, as I've heard more and more of your story, it's there's so many pieces to put together. You're a filmmaker, you grew up in the Salvation Army, all, all these different things. Like, tell us a little of like where, where that path started and, and how you ended up doing the work you're doing right now. Yeah, well, my grandfather was one of the first Chinese pastors in the Salvation Army when he immigrated from China. And um, he came to San Francisco, California, where he started this ministry um, within the Salvation Army for, for the Chinese immigrants. And from there, I've just really grown up around people who are very missional, um, who have a min ministry heart. And I've just learned a lot from his story, and I've learned um, how he's really traveled all around. Mm. Um, one time he went to China and and sent me back a letter with a photograph in it of this little girl that he met. He took a picture of this little girl and it was in a rural village and he t subtitled the picture, She Reminds Me of You. Mm. And this is when I was about eight years old, but when I was reflecting back on, on this photo, looking through some albums, I just kind of reflected on how, you know, that could have been me had, you know, they stayed in China, had my family stayed in China, had I grown up there, that could have been me. But yet, because I've been giving mm. these opportunities, somehow I need to be giving it back to others. There's a good verse, uh, to whom much is given, from them much is expected. And I guess you've taken that to heart. You know, you've been blessed, you came to America, you had the American opportunities and felt you owed something back. You, uh, to whom much is given, from them much is expected is evident in your life. So how do, you, how do your folks feel now? I mean, like there's, sometimes there's a lot of pressure to, to we, we gave, you know, we get, did all this so that you could make it in the, you know, big, live the American dream or whatever. And like, do you, do you have support from your folks? Do you yeah. still have support from the Salvation Army? And Yeah, definitely support from my family. Um, they, because they're all believers as well, they really have seen me change in my own personal testimony of how I've gone from this really bitter and angry child who didn't like mm -hmm. talking to anyone, who didn't care about people, and now you know, working on loving people and trying to follow what that looks like. And so you must have had a personal experience with Christ that brought about this incredible metamorphosis, this change in your life. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so growing up, I was just a very bitter child. Um, I don't know why. I think there's just this dark spirit of bitterness over me, and I was very angry all the time. Um, I didn't like talking to people. I didn't like people in general. I, was, I would always lash out in anger if I didn't get my way. And it wasn't until I was 14 years old where my mom was diagnosed with cancer. Mm. And at that moment, I remember um, my parents were in the bedroom and I could just hear both of them sobbing uncontrollably. And I walked past and I knew that she was diagnosed because um, she had been ill. And I remember going back to my room and just for the first time crying out to God and asking him, where are you? You know, where are you in the midst of my parents' pain? They've been serving you all these years. Where are you? And I really felt the Lord challenging me and saying, if you claim to love me and you claim to follow me, you have to show me what love looks like for other people. Mm. And from then I started striving to see what that looks like in my own life and, and now starting a nonprofit. So but before you did the nonprofit work, you were doing film and, and, that, and maybe you still are, but what, how, did that, how did the film stuff connect? Uh, you know, why, why didn't you just end up making films in Hollywood or something? How, how did you find your way in, as a Christian doing film? In yeah. Africa, no less. Yeah. Um, well, through the Salvation Army, we do a lot of uh, missions trips. And so I grew up doing a lot of missions trips, traveling all over and um, just having a camera with me. And I really began to see the power of storytelling and, and the power um, that a camera can have when, when talking with someone and getting their story. And so once I started to learn more about that and I, I loved traveling, I just thought, you know, how could I um, provide the platform for people to share their stories? Not be the voice for people, but rather provide the platform for which their voices could be heard. And so um, I started just making short films in church and traveling and learning about other people's stories and just fell in love with learning about people through the lens of a camera. Hmm. Was, was, there, was there any particular kind of moment or story that, that sparked things for you where you kind of felt things click? Um, yeah, I think when, well, in starting my nonprofit, um, Which really, is Freely in freely Hope. Freely in Hope. He's getting old. He freely can't remember all this hope. stuff, you know. Freely, freely in, in hope. hope. And if, if people, if you go to our uh, uh, Red Letter Christian uh, dot org website. You'll find out about it. We'll put information about your work and Freely in Hope uh, there on the website. So go yes. ahead. <laughs> um, so when I was um, in college, I, I really wanted to make this film. And where did you do that? Loyola Marymount University in LA. 
uh -huh. um, Jesuit University. Um, when I was in college, I really wanted to make a film highlighting the stories of third world women. Um, I noticed that um, women were very oppressed in, in the ways that they told their stories depicted in the media and, and everything. And because I knew from the stories that my grandfather would share back from China, that even though, even in the midst of poverty and despair and loneliness, that there were still stories of hope and strength and dignity. And I wanted to capture that. And so um, I decided to go to Kenya to make this film. And while there, I just heard remarkable stories um, of women who have just gone through crazy circumstances, yet by God's grace, are now impacting others in their community. Um, grace is one of those stories that I just really felt the Lord challenging me through her story. Once I heard about her and once I learned about her, um, I really wanted to highlight her story so that she can be an encouragement to other people as well. We need to hear about Grace. I think we, we have actually a little clip. We have another clip, and then you're going to tell us about Grace, right? Yeah. Okay, clip number two. Here it comes. Nikawa mwanamke mtukutu sana, yani wakutoa toa mimi. Nditoa mimba tatu. Ninaitwa Grace na ya wangusi. Na nikaacha shule pesa hakuna nikafanya kazi ya nyumba nikafikia mahali fulani nikaanza kusunguka tu nilipoenda kwa mwingine tena yani nataka mafanikio ili nami mwashiani mwangu niwe msichana mrembo nikatanganywa na mtu mwingine akaniambia nikuje nimfanyie kazi tukaenda naye kufika tu mahali fulani akaniambia tuingie wapi tuingie kwa lodging sasa mimi nikafikiria ni boarding ni ile watoto wanakaa ndani kumbe ni lodging ya wanawake na wanaume. Siku hiyo nilitoka na mimba. Nikasema siwezi kupata mimba na kama sijaoleka. Nikatoa hiyo mimba. Nikatoka nikaingia sasa kukunywa pombe na kuingia kwa maba. Nikaona tu kama niko ninasumbukana sana. Nikaingia tena kwa kwa mambo ya ukahapa. Nika ishi nikaenda ninakunywa, ninalewa, ninarudi. Nikawa nina mahali ninalala, ninalalia box. Nikasema nikilala tu hivi e, itakuwa namna gani nikaenda tu It's, it's unbelievable the stories that you're capturing, that you see and you, you give voice to. And I, I kind of wonder, even just on a personal side, as you're doing that, and you, you see stories that don't all end well, um, where, where do you continue to, to feel hope? Where do you see God at, at work in all of it? Yeah, um, I think, you know, despite the depression that a lot of these stories bring, they're still just miraculous stories of hope. And, and that's what I really found in Grace's story, that even though she went through these 
unspoken circumstances that she's now dedicated her life to these children, these children with physical disabilities. What brought about the change in her? In her? Um, I believe it, it was actually the Salvation Army that, that came to her while she was selling coal on the, on the road. The Salvation Army came to her and offered her a job, and it just started with a single job opportunity. How, how is your thinking on like our mission in the world uh, evolved as you're doing this work? Because it seems like some folks would say, well, what people really need is Jesus. Mm. And, and, and that's true. And people also sometimes need a job. Sometimes they need, you know, they need a community. Um, and, and so I, as you're thinking of what Christ's mission in the world sort of looks like, how have you, have you formed your, your thinking on that? Yeah, for us, definitely, it's the gospel presented with the physical, how we can help them physically and how we can help them um, spiritually and also how we can help them in their, in their education as well because we really believe that that's the way that people can get out of the slums or go back to the slums and educate their friends and educate their community there. Um, so that's why we really have a strong stance in focusing on education and on and entrepreneurship. And, you know, Jesus gave... Um, Jesus believed, like, if we give a cup of cold water to the people, you know, how can we provide that refreshment or provide them um, the hand up to, help, to lift them out of the situation that they're facing? Dr. Martin Luther King had a great line. He said, we're called to be the Good Samaritan and, and lift our neighbor out of the ditch. But after you lift so many people out of the ditch, mm. you start to go, maybe the whole road to Jericho needs to be rethought. <laughs> and it seems like that's, we do have to respond to, to mm. folks, but we also can have a big vision, right? Of, of what does it mean to keep women from being forced into patterns of mm. poverty and sex trafficking and things like that. And that's yeah. kind of the work you're up to, huh? Definitely. Tell us a little bit now about what Free Freely and Hope looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Freely and Hope focuses on providing educational scholarships for girls who are survivors of sexual abuse in Kenya and in Zambia. Um, we really aim on providing them holistic care. Um, if they need counseling, we'll pair them with a counselor. If they need um, tuition fees for their children as well, then we'll provide that as well. And if they're in an unsafe living situation, we'll partner them with someone who has access to more safe living conditions. And so we really try to um, just focus on their dreams and their goals and, and help them to achieve that. You know, um, that whole, you use the word holistic. I mean, there are some who try to tell people about Jesus, but don't do anything to really get them out of the mess that they're in. Don't provide jobs, do not provide education, do not provide the health care. They just say, well, give them Jesus. There are others who do all this good stuff, but don't give them Jesus. You need both of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, when I listen to the story of grace, I sense that without Christ being a living presence in her, the odds against her surviving the horrors that she endured, mm -hmm. uh, unless Christ comes and empowers her to overcome the uh, pressures of the world, and she'll be right back in the same mess she got into. Um, I, I'm, I'm intrigued in my uh, own sociological studies of how many people are rescued from this lifestyle mm. who, finding no alternatives, uh, often slip back into it or lacking the spiritual strength to stand against it, uh, move back into this lifestyle. But that combination of providing education, uh, providing health care, providing all kinds of economic support, plus giving them Jesus to empower them to be more than a conqueror over the powers and the principalities that rule this world, that's the combination that'll work. And the Salvation Army deserves a lot of credit for producing such a great person like you are, well, it's, really. It's wild because, you know, I, I heard of the Salvation Army sort of just thinking that these are folks that, you know, that ring the bells and do mm -hmm. stuff at Christmas. Yeah, and where's I, your tambourine? Have, I, I, have I mean, really, you have really good, like, uh, thrift stores, too. But, but like, like <laughs> yeah. it's an amazing Yeah, you history. get most of your clothes such as they are from thrift stores. <laughs> easy, easy. We're commercial. No, uh, but, the, the, so, uh, but you, you know, this, it's an incredible history. William and Catherine Booth and their yeah. passion for interrupting injustice. Does that, do you still draw on those roots sometimes? Do you, do you look yeah. back and think? I 
I do, I do. I think definitely with my Salvation Army roots of, of learning how to be missional, that's really affected the way that I live life now. Mm. Yeah. And what, what's, what's kind of on the horizon now? Do you have a, a story you're telling or a, a project you're working on that y you're excited about? Well, we just really want to continue telling the stories of the people that we serve. And by lifting them up, providing them um, the platform for which they can give their stories in, in the way that they want to and doing that in the most dignified way. That's what we're really... How do, how do their stories get out? I mean, you take these films, you take these photographs. How do they get out? I mean, you want their stories to get it to a wider audience. Definitely, yeah. Well, the film that Grace is featured in is called Wild Women Weep. We sell that on our website, freelyandhope.org. Um, a lot of conferences, you know, people l like to see them. Oh, so you could get the whole story of Grace. Mm -hmm. The whole story of Grace. Uh, by going to uh, the, the website. Mm -hmm. Freelyandhope.org. And, click and, uh, and you can get a copy of this. And uh, so a church or a youth group or, you know, could okay. get a hold of this. Yep. And uh, show the whole story. How long is the whole story? Well, the whole film is 30 minutes and it uh -huh. features three different women. Ah, I see. Grace is one of them. Uh -huh. these, are, these are heroic stories that don't get told. Somebody, I mean, you talk about you know, moving from the depths of despair. I mean, when, when she began to describe the, uh, and the description was given of the abortions, you know, with wires and pills and, oh man, I was hurting just listening to that stuff. Yeah, and I, I think that one of the things that's so exciting is it's women, it's a woman and other women that are championing women's voices around the world. And that's one of the things that we've really felt passionate about on Red Letter Christianity is that, that the church hasn't always done a great job at, at celebrating women leaders. Do you ever uh, hit walls with that or do you? Yeah, every now woman? and then, but fortunately through Salvation Army Roots, we, we encourage. Yeah, the women. Salvation Army Roots. Oh, you've, you're yeah. enlightened. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have well, to worry about that. From day that. one, you know, <laughs> the husband and wife team mm -hmm. uh, had a woman out there preaching and the head of the whole Salvation Army for several years mm -hmm. was a woman. Yep. Uh, and the general that operated the whole world operation mm -hmm. and a great preacher at that. Uh, yeah, so uh, let me tell you, uh, you're an inspiring person just to be around, that you, you, you went through this painful experience with your mother facing cancer, and, and then you move from that into this ministry. God bless you, and uh, our prayers go with you as you continue to do the good work of the kingdom. And thanks for being on the show. Oh, one thing more, I'm going to give you one of these. This makes you officially a red letter Christian. Awesome. You wear it proudly. On the back is our website. You can pray for us. We'll pray for you. Thank you. Thanks for being on the show. Good to have you with us. You're watching Red Letter Christianity. And we just had a great guest, Nicole Lim, uh, who's doing amazing work giving voice to the the women that are out there that have suffered such terrible things it, it makes you start to feel a little uh, heavy as a man in the world we haven't we haven't uh, done so well in a lot of places i i talked to her about that and she said we do have to remember there's a lot of good men out there as well uh, i'm glad she said a lot <laughs> uh, because the reality is i i, I think our culture has has nurtured an attitude towards women that makes them, and I think the feminists are right, and the Christians need to listen to the feminists on this, making women into sex objects, seeing them primarily as, as uh, creatures that were created for sexual gratification instead of as sacred persons who need to be revered and related to uh, as, as agents of God. And, and you look at the, the, the Gospels, you know, the red letter, words of Jesus, the interactions Jesus has with women, and he's just blowing away almost every stereotype and every uh, box that women were trying to put in uh, in their society and, and challenging the cultural norms of women not having voice. And, and it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's an invitation, I think, to us as, as Christians to, to interrupt the ways that we've, we've dehumanized and devoiced women in the world. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh... And we must not make Jesus into somebody who did not have any sexual turn-ons. It says in Scripture, he was tempted in all ways like we are tempted, and yet without sin. He found in his prayer life, he found in his relationship with his heavenly Father, the Son of God was able to find that inner spiritual strength 
to resist the temptations of this world. Mm. And all of us have to be aware that without Christ's help, we won't be able to resist the temptations of this world. So many, so many Christian men, uh, and you know stories of ministers, pastors, evangelists, who did not end well uh, because they weren't sufficiently empowered by Christ's spirit. They depended on their own strength to resist temptations, and they ended up exploiting women and hence destroying themselves in the well, process. Please, I mean, one of the things that's, that, that's really fascinating in Scripture is you got some real womanizers like David, King yeah. David, you know, commits Solomon. adultery with uh, Bathsheba, ends up having her husband killed, and yet, like, he still uh, repents of that, and here's the prophet Nathan's rebuke, and so, like, men are not beyond redemption, but we got to get on our knees. From yeah, time we to better time. get on our knees. Thanks for listening to the show. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're with us, and I hope you become a Red Letter Christian. Incidentally, if you want one of these wristbands that we give out so graciously on this show, why not go to our website, redletterchristians.org, and, and uh, you got an address, and we'll send you one free of charge, a gift from Shane and Tony to you. Blessings on you, and thanks for watching the show today.